Wow, here we are again. Uh, I want to ask you something today. No matter what time of day it is. Uh, for me, uh, right now, it is uh, it's morning. In my, at where we live. And um, it's coming morning, let's put it that way. And when you wake up, do you wake up with the Lord on your mind? When you go to sleep, do you go to sleep with the Lord on your mind? Do you pray yourself to sleep? When you wake up, do you pray yourself awake? Let's just take a look at Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, no, standeth in the way of sinners. Wow. No, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That is really something right there. Are, are you standing in the way of the sinner? Are you sitting in the seat of the scornful? I ask myself that question, Peter. Are you sitting in the seat? Are you doing the bad things or are you following the Lord? Well, listen to this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. What is the law of the Lord? That's to do right. To do right. And God will show you when you're doing wrong. But to do right and have God always on your side, always, day and night, meditating on him. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That is a great word, the word shall. That means it will. It will prosper. Wow. What is your relationship with God today? Uh, what do you what is your realization of the presence of God? Do you have a realization of the presence of God today? Are you looking for that? Is that why you on this channel you happen to punch up somebody who's speaking of God and you want to know? Do you realize that you have a need all the time every minute when you wake up every minute when you sleep every minute that you realize that God is present? That he is He's listening He's watching uh, I had such a conscience God conscience that I can't put a radio on a secular radio station. It would drive me uh, just complaint bonkers if I did. And uh, so my, the commercial, what is uh, communion with God? What is it? Communion with God. That's when you're in touch with God all the time. You have communion with God all the time. Uh, yesterday I was working on a, a spot where I'm putting up some logs to build our log cabins with for our camp. And um, I, I stuck a phone in my finger. Well, in years gone by, if I had a stuck a phone in my finger, I might have made an adverse comment. But I stuck a thorn in my finger and I just said, well... <laughs> I stuck a thorn in my finger, and I went back right on to work. And and uh, remembering that God is always on the scene. He's always on the scene. There is no time God is never there. He's there. Always there. The realization. Uh, as we read the Psalms and the hymns, we're going to find there are... Uh, Five types of men that wrote these psalms. And they, they were followers of God, but they, they, they followed in different ways. 
but God used them in different ways. And then uh, some of them wrote hymns of praise. Others wrote a lamentation, a national lamentation, a lamentation for the whole country. We need that today. Then we had royal signs, which these are called messianic signs. And those are for us to use on a daily basis. And then we had individual laments. That's if you've done something and you feel like it was not in the will of God, you lament about it and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I need you to forgive me. I need you on the scene. I need you here. It, God hasn't gone anywhere. The person that's lamenting is the one that went somewhere, just like myself. If I neglect to get in front of this computer, I have uh, aggression in me. It says, what's the matter with you? Are you not following the Lord? Why are you not doing what you've been commanded to do? And this is a good question. And I'm answering it. I'm by being on here right now. I'm answering the question. And thanksgiving of the individual. These are psalms. They're written. And some of them are written this way. Thanksgiving. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise his holy name. Praise him on the timbrel. Praise him on the harp. Praise him with the horn. Praise him with your mouth. Praise the Lord. Praise him with your heart. But praise the Lord. This is the important thing. Uh, the uh, uh, psaltery in the Bible it talks about the psaltery. That was an instrument that was played. And... Uh, gave a living testimony to Israel and to the people who played this. And, and even though they were many times, they were in hardship. They were in struggles. They had hard times on them. Yet, they called on God. They were God's people. And while they were in the pilgrimage, they were in. Why were they in? where they were. Why did they have such a hard time uh, back in the original when God said you can go into the promised land? They could have walked in there and never fought a battle. God would have probably, more than likely, if they had followed Joshua and Caleb and walked in there, the, uh, God would have sent a swarm of bees to drive the people out. A swarm of bees will drive people out. A swarm of bees will drive them completely out. And they would have been gone. Let Psalm 1 that we're talking about today. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of sinners. Uh, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth the fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Do I need that psalm today? Yes, I do. I need that psalm today. I'm headed for the grave. We all are. But at 78, you're closer than the most, maybe. And the thing about it is, is what I have done and am doing, my leaf's not going to wither. And the, what I, God has given me the commission to do is going to prosper. It's going to prosper. And I need to make sure that it does. I need to stay at all times beneath the wings of God. I need to stay close to Him. Hey, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, 
but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Wow. Man. This is, that is Psalm 1. That is what I needed today and what I need today. We all need this today. Do you, are you close enough to God to talk to him today and feel that he gives you the answer that you need? If you're not, you need to ask him, say, God, forgive me that I'm not. You give me the ability to get where you want me. Get your Bible out. Pick you up a Bible that has some little references in it. This happens to be here. Uh, it says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, 19. And I've been a fisher of men for years. The book of Psalms is a precious book. It gives you the answer inside for everything you need. It can take away the doubt uh, that you might have uh, in you. Uh, the Psalms are very important. They are the background of Jesus' ministry. If you read the Psalms, you'll find the life of Jesus in the Psalms. My uh, recommendation to you would be to follow what the Psalms say to you. Just start with this little old first Psalm. It just has uh, six little old verses. And the second one uh, is like it. It has uh, 12 verses. Just why, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing and the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord? We live in a country. I live in America. And everybody is taking uh, sides against the Lord. Boy, when the Lord comes against you, you will see something. We are just recently have witnessed a storm that God allowed to come and clean up a place. Uh, we need to take counsel together uh, that the Lord doesn't come against us. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. Cast away your sin. Break the bonds of sin. Cast them away. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. If you don't turn away from your wickedness and turn to God, one of these days God is going to blow you away and you're going to be in hell forever. You'll be in hell forever. I, my advice to you today is to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. Then he shall speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. I believe it's exactly what we just saw a little while ago in this big storm that blew this island away. That God's displeasure of what was going on in that country that God cleaned it up. And don't think he can't do it right here on, on the mainland of the United States. He can do it and will if he has to. Ah, he said, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. Has God said unto you, Thou art my son? Have you said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul? And God will say, Thou art my son? Wow. And this day have I begotten thee. He was talking here about the son, his son, Jesus. But the day that we asked him to forgive us of our sin and come in our heart was the day he begotten us too. 
Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possessions. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye uh, perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. It only takes a little bit of wind to blow the stuff away on this earth. It only takes a little bit. And so our time has come and gone. We will uh, see you next time. Brother Peter with tidbits from the word.